Well, uh, late in the afternoon of uh, September 20th. The tide is starting to come in. I got tied up so I didn't have time to come down earlier. But I'm down here now. Still looking for that balsam point. The point balsam point. Oh, that's nice. I'm glad. I'm glad that. I'm glad it got sunny. Well, that could have been a point, a little point. What's this? Well, it looks a lot different. Limestone. No, nothing particularly special about it, no fossils. Okay, maybe over here.
Well, that's an interesting one. That could have been a possible tool. Uh, I don't know. Could that have been a, an ad, or could it have been something to make sparks with? Hard to say. cutting tool. You can tell by the design. Purpose was made for helping in process for help in processing game. that make it go hmm. That's a piece of that kimber light. I don't know. That is actually a natural, that was that stone's natural shape. some point B.
Oh, another piece of kimberlite. Wow. I will say that's a capstone. That's a nice piece of work too. They would have had the edge a lot, sh a lot sharper. So I'm looking for what we have to find. Oh, hello, crab! It's that Falsum Point. In Flint, you gotta find that, and and uh, more of the uh, effigies. That's what that's what we gotta find. Anything that looks like an effigy, that's what I want to catalog. I, I was just looking at that. Yeah, that's a definitely, definitely an early point, spare point, or or a, a, a handheld tool for processing fish, game, whatever. We call it an artifact. Okay. Now I gotta walk all the way back here again. And start here. Well, that's not an accident. Other, um, they rub points into this, like arrow, a lateral points, uh, spare points, and they just kept rubbing the edge until the edges of those points got sharp, but that left scoring marks in the rock. Uh, sort of like back and forth. You just keep rubbing a stone. Well, of course, this would have to be sitting in it. And they would rub it until they got an edge on this one. That's how that worked. 
Oh, definite Kimberlite. Yep. I don't know. They used it for something. Well, this is no accident. This was shaped, and it was, uh, if you wanted to uh, break something, if you wanted to smash large animal bones, or branches, you would use this. But, here's my third fossil of the day. More of that Cairo Lepis fossil. That's, that is a nice example. So even, even, uh, even during the, the stone here is as old as the Upper Neolithic period, thirty-five thousand BP. To 10,000 BP, and even they used it, even with this fossil on it. But I bet they it never occurred to them. Maybe they thought there was a spirit in the stone. One never knows. That's a Quite a little, that is a little discovery in itself. And this little, this here is an igneous stone, has some weight to it. It's not kimberlite, but it's uh, fairly heavy. They would use that probably to sand down. They would use it to sand down spare shafts or arrow shafts or something because you can see how rough it is, just like sandpaper. Yep, they probably would have used this stone here. For, uh, I don't know, grinding seeds or something. Who knows? Or for for um, uh, pecking grooves into other stones. And here is another one.
did I discover a Folsom camp or Paleo Indian camp? I know I I know I discovered a Folsom camp camp, but uh, yeah. But so far, all the all the points, various style of points. Well, should tell the should tell a real paleontologist that. Yeah, there's there's evidence here that spans the. Uh, the, the full spectrum of the uh, Neolithic period. Good God. Where is that? Okay. This is an interesting stone. This, this was fashioned. It was fashioned by hand for some reason. Just perfect, yeah. I'll call that a, a balsam tool. Oh my. Yeah. It definitely was a fashioned tool, another Folsom tool. Okay, am I in the... I should be in the right area. What do I see down here? The same thing. Well, nope. There's no smoke smell off it. So that means this was used to uh, this, it's, it is a sort of cup stone, but it was used to sharpen other stones to finer edges. Uh, like that. Well, looky there. And they would have worked on that stone until they got a good sharp edge on that. Oh my. Chisel. It was, yep. Okay. This here is a... Now this here was used by uh, Archaic in the upper Neolithic period, Archaic woodland period. And so was this. I think I just found a Falsam hammer, or a Falsam... I don't think it would have made a good hammer. Maybe it was, it was used for something, I don't know what. Let's wash this off and see if this I'm thinking effigy stone. You have to, you, uh, you sort of have to remember that even the stones had spirits, and if they made, 
if they made a stone look like a, a, an animal, a bird, a fish, that there would be a spirit. And they would pray to the spirit and give it offerings of some kind to give them luck in their hunting or fishing. And I believe this is the case for this. Oop. This is an effigy stone. It's too soft to be used as a hammer. Let's catalog this. There. There. Well, obviously not a bear. I think this here is a... Could it be a bird's head? No, the snout's too wide. Could it be a wolf? Possibly. It could be a wolf. It has a right, right shaped snout for a wolf. Well. That's pretty amazing. Actually. What I think I will do 